What's going on, everybody? Welcome back, Pigeons420. I hope you guys are well and warm. Kicking it fly today because we have got a discussion to be had. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been highlighting harvesting. We talked about the cure and my process to get it done. But what I want to do in this video is talk about the mistakes that you can make while harvesting and ways to avoid them. I think sometimes we can learn a little bit more when we know that what mistakes are out there and ways to avoid them. And if we can pair that with our knowledge of how to get it done correctly, we can really, really come out ahead. So let's go ahead and highlight those in this video. But before we get into that, guys, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of the channel, Spider Farmer and AC Infinity, man. AC Infinity has got one of the best names in the game when it comes to air circulation. They've now released tents, they've got bowl trimmers, they've got trimmers, they've got circulating, oscillating fans, you name it. You can go check them out at acinfinity.com and use promo code PIGEONS. 420 to save a few dollars off at checkout. Thank you, ACI, for being a sponsor of today's video. And a huge shout out to Spider Farmer, man. They were kind enough to hit us up with their SE5000, and I am over the moon with this light. It is the bar series style of lights. It's dimmable, it's da daisy chainable, it has got everything you need for a perfect 4x4 or a 5x5 size tent, and I am so ecstatic that I've had the opportunity to try it out. So if you want to do the same thing, you can head over to spiderfarmer.com or you can go to Amazon, check out the links below, use promo code PIGEONS5, save a few dollars off at checkout, and thank them for being a sponsor of today's video. We appreciate you guys. Now, let's talk about some harvesting mistakes. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my number one mistake that I think most people are doing when they harvest their products. And I want to hear from you what you think as well. So let's go. I often think people are cutting their branches way too small. If you cut your branches too small, they dry too fast. You keep those branches together. You keep that plant as one. The majority of that moisture is going to keep intact within that plant. And it's going to allow the plant to dissipate or expunge or evaporate that moisture equally throughout the entire plant. But generally speaking, drying too fast is a huge mistake. It's a big issue. You want to make sure you have a good climatized environment. One that you've tried and tested and one that's properly ventilated and hydrated. Use a small dehumidifier. Use a small humidifier. Use a small heater. Use a small inline. Use a small fan. Minimal circulation, but some circulation goes a long way. Don't use the wrong tools. Get a good pair of shears. Ones with a good spring in them. Don't use scissors anymore. Don't use tree trimmers anymore. Use a good pair of trimmers. It'll go a long way in your hand. It'll go a long way for your health and it'll save your back. Not making it comfortable for yourself. There's no reason you shouldn't take the time to prepare your station, whether you like to sit, I prefer to stand, give yourself those good trimmers we were talking about, make sure you've got some music turned on, get some friends over. It's called trim jail, but it doesn't have to be trim hell. Use the right storage containers. Quit using paper bags. Grab yourself some either some, some good quality jars, some sea vaults, get your grove bags, grab whatever you need. Just start moving on to something a little more qualified for the job. You spent a lot of time working on this plant, getting through the flowering and harvest stage. Now you need something very high quality to keep it in. After you choose your storage device, you're going to ensure that you're not putting those buds in too early or too late. You want to make sure that those buds are optimal. A good crunch with a little bit of moisture on the inside and that way it's going to pull the remaining bit of moisture out and still keep those buds nice and either burping too much or not enough. If you get the buds in at the right time with that crunch on the outside and the bounce in the middle, it's going to ensure that you can get to them once a day to burp and then after that first week, you can come in there every single week just to give them a little bit of a twist. Always keeping an eye, of course. Storing it long term incorrectly. If you're not keeping it in a cool, dark space, it's going to have light penetration, it's going to degrade, and it's not going to be the greatest for the longest amount of time. That's where using things like maybe like a Bovita pack or some kind of hydration pack for long term will go a long way. Long term storage? What? 
I feel like too many of us are smoking it too soon. I say a minimum of two weeks, but even at two weeks, that's too soon. You need to be giving it at least a month in the cure before you start token on it to really ensure that you're getting that ultimate potency and, and just mwah, flavor. Harvesting too early. I can say it with great confidence because it's something that I did for way too long. Even though I was getting a good look at the trichomes, I thought I was getting a good look at the trichomes, I was not fully evaluating just the entirety of the plant. I would look at a few spots, I would see that they were kind of meeting my expectation, but I wouldn't take it farther than that. I wouldn't look all over the plant. And generally speaking, I was harvesting way too early. I was not pulling out the full potency and maximum, you know, just the maximum that the plant had to offer. And that's because it wasn't ready. It could be weeks. It would often be maybe two weeks early. And that was my biggest mistake because it didn't matter how much effort and time I put in after that, the mistake was made. Everything was done at that point. That was just the biggest hurdle that I had to get over was just knowing when to properly harvest. It was my biggest mistake. And I think if there's anything I could, I, I could pass off to you, it's that if you're going to be harvesting, and I know many of you are, get a good look at those trichomes. Understand the trichome development. I, I, watch them develop from that clear to the milky to the amber and watch as they grow and they kind of flop and they, you know, they get weak. And that's understanding that process will go a real long way. So don't fall into the trap of harvesting too early. Get yourself a good microscope, a good telescope, and you won't be let down. It's going to go a long way. And those are the mistakes to avoid when harvesting. If you have any mistakes that you would like to add below, please feel free. I know I missed about a million and a half. I would love to hear what you guys have to add to the conversation. Go ahead. Don't forget, do me a favor. Hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Help us get to the 100,000 subscriber mark. Wouldn't that be crazy? Guys, have a great weekend, and we'll see you real soon. Peace. Is looking at ways to avoid making mistakes <clears throat> simpler or to avoid or the mistakes to fuck man over the last couple of weeks we've been talking about harvesting the processes as get if it's to avoid them mistake often by learning the mistakes we can highlight no fuck or the mistakes that you can make along that it's not.